Hi, welcome to Muddy's Trophy Pursuit. It is a, a beautiful day down here in southern Iowa. I'm actually out uh, spending the afternoon checking some cards on the edge of our aero seed food plots, looking for a big buck that's moving in daylight. As you know, the season opens here in Iowa on Sunday. So it is uh, finally that time of year and we're hoping to find a day walker. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna check a camera over my shoulder here. Hopefully there is a, uh, a good deer that showed up on it. And I'm gonna check a few other plots down the road and uh, same thing, hopefully a good deer showed up. Typically what I usually do on the opening day is film Alex and the last few years we've had some really good luck. She killed a buck we call Fat Boy. Two years ago, the first day that we went out, a seven or eight year old whitetail, then last year she almost killed a buck that we called Six Pack and a Pound right here over my shoulder. This particular food plot is uh, one we've had for the last few years. It sits down in this low spot here and we've had some pretty challenging hunts here. There's always a ton of deer around here but the issue that we run into is that being down in a low spot, it seems like even if you walk in with the wind in your face, that it'll swirl every now and then and blow the field. So as you can see behind me, we put a uh, muddy bull box blind up. That will do a few things. That's going to control our, our thermal, our noise, and obviously our scent control. It's really gonna add to this location. So I better get rolling, gotta get this uh, checked. On today's episode, we're gonna follow along with Jeff Riggin and team member Taylor Riggin. Taylor, as you know, killed a nice elk in Wyoming last year. This year it was his dad's turn. His dad drew a tag. They're hunting public ground, do-it-yourself hunt, and they really got into to the elk this year. So after that, you're gonna follow along with me. We're gonna go to my other food plot. I wanna show you how we used uh, Aero Seed Green Screen to not only aid us in cover to get to our bail blind, but to uh, manipulate deer movement as well. Muddy's Trophy Pursuit is proudly powered by Muddy Outdoors, Big Game Tree Stands, Matthews Archery, Sitka Gear, Scent Crusher, Monster Meal Deer Attractants, Wind Pro, Arrow Seed, Range Broadheads, Block Targets, IQ Bow Sights, Nocturnal Lighted Knox, Outdoor Edge, and Vortex Optics. guys, it's the end of September here in Iowa. Before you know it, we will be in the tree stand hunting whitetails, um, and it's that time of the year that we've all been looking forward to. But uh, in September this last week, my dad and I were able to make it out for a uh, quick elk hunt in Wyoming. Uh, it was a DIY elk hunt in the Bighorn Mountains, and uh, we were able to get into the elk right away. I've got a buddy out there, Patrick Higgins, who really helps out a lot um, on finding the elk and, and getting us into them. So we got into them right away and it was a lot of fun. My dad's not a big fan of cameras, but we're gonna go ahead and air this footage anyway. Sorry, Dad.
As you can see, we got into the elk right away the first couple days. It did slow down and get a little bit tougher to find them right after that, but um, uh, the evening of the third day, we did, we did go after a, a bigger bull that Patrick had seen earlier in the week. Um, and it was kind of a bust of a hunt, but on the way back to the four-wheeler, we did get into them and we got in front and we were uh, in place ready for them as they were moving out to feed. Well, that was a heartbreaker that it turned out that we didn't get an arrow in that bull. Um, it just it goes to show you when you're archery hunting elk, anything can happen and everything's got to be set up perfect um, for you to get in there. And, and that bull just kind of bounced out um, behind that behind that tree after the cow spooked and, and was at 60 yards. And, and you know what, that's a pretty long shot when they're moving. And, and I, I applaud my dad for, for letting down and passing on that, that kind of marginal shot that he wasn't comfortable with. So with a pretty good cold front moving in, they were predicting rain and 12 inches of snow. Um, we ended up not getting that much, but uh, the rain and a little bit of snow that we did kind of shut the elk up and, and they kind of just laid out tight and was, was making the hunting a little bit harder um, combined with the pressure that was in the area. So we'd made the decision to head lower um, to a little bit warmer, drier, location to see if uh, we could find some bulls that were still talking. Um, we went down lower and, and hunted the uh, Pinion Juniper Canyon kind of area um, down at the base of the mountain and uh, we did get into a canyon that had some bulls in it. So um, from that point on it was time to just figure out uh, which one we get called in and see if it was worth taking a shot at. See if you like it when you stand in the front of That's awesome. Okay. He was just too ornery not to shoot. <laughs> and stuff all over his oh, yeah. horns. He, <laughs> he run down that hill when he's going on there. Yeah, he's running like a like a freaking. You think horse. you're quite something. So. <laughs> <laughs> Eight days. Eight days of waking up before sunlight and getting back to camp after dark. Eight days of hiking up and down mountains, through streams, and various other obstacles. Eight days is what it took for Jeff to finally fill his Wyoming elk tag. 
As we head into whitetail season here in Iowa and other states across the country, we should remember that we likely won't fill a tag on day one and maybe not on day 15 or even by the end of the season. Regardless, we should enjoy the grind, be thankful for the opportunity to pursue game, and remember that the hunt never ends. Good luck this season from all of us at Muddy's Trophy Pursuit. We hope you follow along with our stories. So that's two years in a row now that the Riggins have kicked off our fall season here at Trophy Pursuit with an awesome elk hunt. Uh, Jeff, I couldn't be happier for you. I know how long you waited to draw that tag and then to get out there and hunt as hard as you guys did before finally getting it done is just uh, it's very re a very rewarding feeling. But with that, uh, we are now transitioning into 100% whitetails here for the most part at Trophy Pursuit the rest of the year. We're going to be all about big whitetails, trying to bring you as much up-to-date information as possible. As I mentioned earlier, I wanted to uh, end today's show with showing you one of uh, my last setups on this particular farm. One thing we did this year is, as you can tell, we've got a super lush stand of Aeroseed Brassica Plus behind me. Um, over my shoulder, you can see I put a muddy bale blind, and then there's a row of green screen. Now, the green screen didn't get as tall as what it did last year. We, we have been experiencing very dry weather, so it did not get as tall as it typically does, but it's still tall enough, even in these drought conditions, that I can access it um, from the north, and I got a trail cut through it to get in the bale blind be able to hunt and then as deer are even feeding in the field behind me, I should be able to exit, stay in this low spot and uh, head back to the vehicle. So I'm really excited about that. So this is the second year that we've been utilizing green screen and last year we used it 100% for cover to get in and out of our setups. One thing we noticed by doing that last year was that the green screen grew up so tall and so thick that what that stand of green screen also did was it acted as a barrier for the whitetails and they would they would go around it and enter food plots wherever we ended it at or they'd cruise through a field and they'd use that that uh, green screen for cover uh, as edge habitat as they traveled from one spot to the next so it got us thinking why not utilize this green screen to manipulate their movement this year and that's exactly what we did now we've got a we've got the bale blind behind me here that we're going to hunt with south winds um, in that back corner back there we've also got a double set we've got two muddy boss xls in that tree and the deer when when they would enter this food plot from the south they'd kind of enter it all over the place but it'd be mainly in that corner but they might enter it from 20 yards to 70 yards in that corner which which when you're using a bow when you're bow hunting obviously 70 yards is is too far so uh, what we did this year was we we took that corner of the food plot we planted a, uh, a row of green screen that's probably 60 yards wide and what that did was it, it's forcing those deer to now come out and they're, they're heading to the right and they're entering the food plot now at about 18 yards and uh, it, it's actually worked better than expected so next year I can guarantee you we're going to be utilizing that green screen even more and uh, continue to manipulate their movements to benefit us from wherever our setups are at. So I think that's it for now. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's show. Keep checking back in, and we're going to have some more blogs, some more articles, and some more videos coming your way. Lastly, don't forget to go to GoMuddy.com. Check out all the products that we have available. We are your one-stop shop for whitetail hunting, and you can find our products at a retailer near you. So best of luck this year, and keep following us right here at Muddy's Trophy Pursuit.